Welcome to RidingAlong.com. Today's episode is on how to be less repetitive in your riding. Four steps, actually, and they're pretty straightforward. The first one, right off the bat, is worry about fixing your repetitiveness after. Don't be in the book, in the draft, whatever you're writing, and obsessing over every single thing you write, and just trying to overall waste a lot of time editing while you're going. And I have a video specifically on this, but it applies here too, because when you're writing, you're going to find you use this word a lot and this this word a lot too. And it, it just might look annoying and you'll probably get upset at yourself. And you're going to look for a quick fix, like an easy solution. Uh, just deal with it after. It Don't let it be a roadblock for you is what I'm saying. The idea is your brain is still communicating ideas. It's still getting them out there. And it's just doing the best it can in that moment. So if you've just kind of berate its ability and don't let it actually prosper and grow and utilize what it's trying to do uh, you're going to just kind of train it not to want to express itself with writing and writing might in general feel less fun it might be something you don't really look forward to anymore so over be like, like a very common thing i talk about all the time be a little easier on yourself don't just beat yourself up over it uh, you, like i said your brain is doing the best job it can all right, second tip, and yeah, I'm reading off a little list right here. They're just bullet points. I'm just going off on the spot. Read books with a lot of complex uh, word choice. Uh, you don't have to actually look up every single definition because that would be a pain. That would be a drag to do. You could, especially if you have like a Kindle. I don't read with a Kindle, but I, I've had one, so I know how it works, right? You like highlight it or you push the word and the definition pops up. Go ahead and do that. It doesn't have to be books you have to pay for. I mean, there's a plenty of books on, I think, Project Gutenberg. It's uh, a bunch of free literary works, and you're going to find all kinds of stuff with words you've never heard of. And just being exposed to them is going to give you a little more variety. You don't have to look into the definitions of each and every one. It's That's going to be kind of painful to do, too. The idea is that your brain is going to see words used in different contexts and it's a very uh, higher process in your brain neurologically the complexity of how your brain will store these words into your long-term memory is something beyond the scope of this video but just know that it's working hard it's doing it and you're gonna learn to insert certain words in sentences when you need them whether you even know what the word means it's crazy you're gonna Readers in general have statistically a wider vocabulary. It's not just because, oh, this higher intelligence. No, it's just they're exposed to more words. And therefore, they know where to put them, how to use them, even if they don't know the definition. This happens all the time to me. Insert a word. What does that mean? Why did I think of that word? And I look it up and it fits. Some things you don't need a very long explanation for. You just need to know they work. I've seen it work for myself. I've seen it work for others. And I know it can work for you, too. Uh, third thing is ask yourself, why do you keep repeating yourself? That might be the root of the problem you really want to get to. A lot of it is mental. I mean, the majority, all of it is, right? I mean, what's really external? The words that you're writing are coming from you. And it's not someone dictating it to you. So it's not, uh, you're not just listening to a radio program and copying everything you hear. It's transcribing. That's not creative writing so what's up with this repetitiveness it's probably a pattern you found yourself in this loop that you're trying to break and uh, with that you just really got to analyze and ask yourself and be honest too uh, one reason that some people might get stuck is because they're afraid to express themselves and they kind of self-sabotage any chance at it by purposefully just ruining whatever they're writing your work. I know it sounds crazy, but it really might be uh, subconsciously this intention you have. A another reason too might just be your, I guess it's very connected, but just you're scared of being open and honest in general with yourself. So when you're writing, of course, it's going to be expressed in that way. And you're going to find that you're just going in circles around this deep topic that you have that you're trying to write and convey through a story. And because of that, you're not ever going to really tell it. Not in an effective way. I mean, it's standing out to you already. 
be like, what's wrong with it? Oh, I keep repeating myself here. Just understand that there aren't really, really many consequences, especially when you're just writing for yourself. If you haven't published it, if you're not syndicating this book chapter by chapter to a, a massive literary magazine, you're like, you're going to be okay. Just let it all out on the page. Open the flood. It's that simple. It's not this thing you have to um, spend years really fixing. Sometimes it's just kind of, again, acknowledging, oh, okay, this is, this is the reason I'm being repetitive. It's a little deeper. And trust me, it's going to go a long way. Uh, fourth way is, is it a bad thing? Is it really that bad to use your favorite word quite often? Sometimes it's not. I mean, it, it just might be characteristic of you, of your own uh, writing devices and writing style, uh, in which case you don't really have to worry about it so much. As long as, I can't even give a fixed guideline, really. If you read it, if you give it to someone, they're like, oh yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you're talking about. Like, I, 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 it's, it's easy to read. I know what you're saying. I understand it. It's okay. If they're just irritated and they, like, they bring it up, that's a problem. Plenty of uh, prolific famed literary writers were very not exactly innovative in their modes of expression, meaning the word choice sometimes wasn't exactly the most varied. If you threw it into a computer and got a percentage for uh, biggest word choice, it, it probably wouldn't be that, that big. It wouldn't be that wide. It wouldn't be that high of a percentage. And also story devices too the way you're telling the story you might feel you're just using the same approach over and over again all i can really say is don't look for an essay on there don't there's, there doesn't need to be a, a novel just on this concept because look to the past look at plenty of writers really of all genres right of all areas of all wherever they're coming from they pretty much use the same formula. And the really interesting ones created their own formulas. Or they built off other ones. And, and they weren't trying to, but they just they wanted to do something a little different. And they did, and they weren't afraid to. Which is what you can do too. But you may find you that you grab onto that and hold onto it. And just keep using it and using it. Is that a bad thing? It might not be. Because think about it. Most people aren't going to read every single thing you write. If you write a book, some people might skip chapters. Some people might drop off in the middle. Uh, they might not read all of your books if you're writing a series. They, they might jump in somewhere in the middle or at just the end. They might skim through. They might just read about your book. It's still like you as an author, but that's what I'm saying. The world is a lot less critical than you think, although it may seem that it's more because inside, you're already attacking what you're writing because you want the best you want to not the best in the world but the best for yourself and if repetition is something that's popping out at you i hope this video does help uh you realize some of the things i'll go over all four again just to uh, recap uh worry about fixing it after if it's a word that you don't mean to keep using it it just looks annoying you like you really don't want to be doing that continue writing don't let it stop you in the process uh second way is to read books with really complex word choices again a lot of older literary works uh, serve this purpose very well and again it's ironic but they might be using those same uh, big words over and over again but just knowing and being exposed to ones that you otherwise wouldn't use it's going to help you it's going to go a really long way in knowing when to use them on your own and you won't be looking it up like, oh, when do I get to use this word? Uh, no, you'll just know like, it's time to use it. it this is the place to place it. it. It's a sentence begging for the insertion of this uh, word device, or this word choice. Uh, the meaning that it's going to convey, all the consonants, the rhythm of it. it it's, it's very intrinsic. That part you don't really have to worry about on your own. And third thing is ask yourself, why do I keep repeating words? Or stories, story uh, designs, plots, all of that. Maybe you just really find comfort in the way that you're going about it. Or, again, it could be something a little 
a little deeper. It could be. You'll know it if I'm telling you and you connect with this. If not, then go ahead and admit it. This, that's not the reason for me. But you, you just might be scared of self-expression to begin with in your time subconsciously ruining your efforts before you begin and it, it's not really something you gotta again spend decades overcoming it, it sometimes it's just as simple as realizing like oh i'm doing that oh i don't have to do that and then sure enough you don't have to do that you don't need to schedule uh, 50 therapy sessions to a uh, right chapter three and four and five and six. just acknowledge what's going on up there and you'll build a deeper relationship with that writer self in you. And fourth, fourth way is, is it a bad thing? It might not be. It really might just be you loving that word. And it pops out a lot, yeah, but maybe it has a, a meaning. Maybe it has a purpose in, maybe it's like a, a subtext that you're not purposefully creating, but is existing anyways within your writing. And story structure and all that there's nothing wrong with sticking to the same thing that you know when it's time to move to something different you will and this is the beauty of it when you do move on to a different structure you're not doing it just for the sake of it you ever heard i compare it to music a lot writing it's music a lot because it's it's rhythms it's patterns I'll, I'll do a video on that on its own too but it's patterns of the mind rhythms of uh, the cortex and synapses in your brain lighting up. And it, that's why it feels good to read uh, readers out there. And I really think people who don't even like reading would also, they really, they just had a bad first exposure to it. Again, you will switch to a different format and plot structure when it's time. Unlike a song that includes an entire uh, orchestral horn section, uh, they bring in the LA Philharmonic just, just to change things up. But you listen to it and it's like, was that necessary? You know, it doesn't really fit in. When you're writing, you don't want to, <laughs> you don't want to have the, whatever, the Philharmonic effect. I don't know if that's a thing, but it is now. So, all right. If you're trying to write a book, check out on writingalong.com, how to write a book in 30 days, 10 part guide. It's long form, but you know what? It's having this in your inbox having this on your computer save as a pdf it's gonna it's gonna be a lifesaver when the time comes when you're ready to write your book might be today all right so i'll see you around and see you on the next episode